Hello, and welcome to another broadcast of Project CSK. I'm the creator of Project CSK, and the online name that I go by is Des. Now, uh, yesterday, I kind of left things off at uh, kind of in between, and I want to continue from where I left the functionality off yesterday and continue right from there. But before we jump into that, let's do a quick recap, because um, I feel like uh, not many people quite understand what what I'm doing here exactly. And what I'm trying to do with these broadcasts is to share the behind the scenes and the experience of what it is that goes into making a project like this, Project CSK, and uh, all the challenges that I come across, because they're a normal part of development. You can't have development without challenges. That's what makes it interesting. That's why I do it, is because of the challenges. Every single challenge that is presented always has a solution. There is never a challenge that doesn't have a solution. And it's important to look at them in that way because there isn't always one solution. Oftentimes there's more than one solution or a number of solutions and it's up to you to make the right choice or maybe there's no right choice either. It's just a matter of choosing which path is the most appropriate that you're most comfortable with going. And that's what I'm doing. I don't always make the right decisions. I oftentimes uh, will, in the moment, make a decision and then come back and revisit it at a later time and decide, oh, well, maybe that wasn't the greatest solution or, wow, I really messed that one up. What was I thinking? And then I implement a better solution at that time that's more appropriate. And that's perfectly okay. That's all part of the development process. And that that is completely what I expect to encounter on a regular day-to-day -day development um, you know, journey of trying to get the project to where I want it to be. Uh, project CSK is something, as you may already know, that I've been working on for a really long time. Yes, I, I put it aside and I pick it up at different times. I don't work on it consistently just because of uh, commitments and other things that will affect uh, me in my personal life, but I'm not going to go into that part of it. Project CSK, since the start of this year, I picked it up again with full intention of moving forward and seeing, uh, you know, what what I can make of it, what I can uh, make of it in the terms of what I envision it to be and what I've always envisioned it to be, which is much bigger than what I accomplished, in my opinion, before. I'm not saying what I did before was... Um, incorrect, but it just didn't quite meet the standard of what I would have liked it to, which is the the bigger vision of where I always see or have always seen Project CSK. And it's much bigger, much, much bigger than, than the current Flash version of it right now. Flash, of course, is nearing end of life. And at the end of this year, which is roughly one and a half months away, Flash will have reached end of life. So for those of you that still use the Flash Player client, uh, there's a good chance you will no longer be able to use it in your browser. That doesn't mean that the server is shut down. It just means that the client will no longer load in the browser. Therefore, you're unable to connect to the server. The server is still there. Nothing's happening to the server. It's not getting shut down. It's just that the client will no longer be able to run. This is outside of my control, of course. I have no control over what browsers, what Adobe, Microsoft, or anyone else does. I'm just a developer doing my part of it being the creation of the client that gets used in one form or another. Now, the idea with rebuilding it inside of Unity is to make it cross-platform so it will work on all platforms natively. It doesn't matter if it's Android, a phone, or tablet, uh, if it's Apple uh, uh, iPhone or uh, iPad, or it could be uh, Mac OS X, it could be Windows, it could be uh, Ubuntu, it could be whatever you want it to be. You, that's one of the great things about um, Unity is you can just build it for that platform and Unity will manage that part of it. And the great thing about it is that it can work the same on all platforms. Yes, there will be some little differences like performance-wise. Of course, you won't get as much performance out of a really old uh, 
a mobile device versus a modern day PC, which has a lot more power. And that's understandable, but it'll still work. I'm going to, in the future, performance optimize it for it to work on low end devices. And if it works on low end devices, it's gonna work on pretty much anything and everything that's modern. And that's part of the design. And then on top of that, it'll have multiple inputs from the user, meaning you can use it with um, a keyboard and mouse on any device. It could be your Android, it could be your uh, iPhone. You can connect a keyboard and mouse, Bluetooth or wired, and it'll work that way. Uh, you could also, um, you could even potentially run it off of one of those TV devices, like uh, the Apple TV or, uh, one of the uh, Android, uh, I, I forget what it's called. I think it's called Google TV or something like that. You could potentially even run it on something like that and then connect the mouse and keyboard or your joystick to it and it'll work. In addition, it, it works with touch screens. It doesn't matter what you're running it on. It could be Windows that has a touch screen, uh, screen and it'll work with that. It could be a mobile uh, phone. It could be a tablet. It could be pretty much anything. It'll still work on it. And then what I really am interested in, though, is taking it, the functionality, the game mechanics, the gameplay, all of those, and just taking them to the next level of how I envisioned it. And right now, my focus is the game room. And the reason why I'm focusing on the game room is because I want to build some of the functionality uh, to, to have a starting point. The starting point is the game room, but that's not the end. That's only the beginning of it. From the game room, because it gets built out, a lot of the functionality, the components, the input, and all the other stuff like communication, synchronization with the server and other clients, it gets built into the game room, yes, but it gets shared. So when I shift my focus over to the world part of it, then some of that will have already existed and I'll just be able to leverage it, pick those components up and use them how I need to, modify them a little bit here and there, of course, and then start building out the world. I haven't even gotten into the pets, combat, quest system, inventory system, or any of the other things that I mentioned that are farther down the uh the roadmap, like say the dungeon system, the savior system, um, uh, all of those other things. And we haven't even really built out the world yet. For four, we were always stuck into the little uh, corner of the town. We never actually went beyond the initial boundaries of the starting point town. There's an entire universe out there and it's not just the universe, it's a multiverse, right? So down the line, we'll be able to explore uh, and uh, the story of course itself, that'll build out as well as we go deeper and deeper down this rabbit hole of, uh, of journey of just, uh, figuring it all out and it's going to be really interesting. I'm looking forward to it. And um, it's something that I definitely enjoy working on and I hope you enjoy watching it. And uh, thank you for watching. And in the future, uh, what I'd like to do, of course, is um, have more users join the, the beta testing program. So it helps me uh, crack down uh, some of these bugs that I either uh, didn't test for uh, because I didn't think about it, something I overlooked, something I potentially completely missed, or it could be a specific case scenario that's unique to a device or something that I'll need to figure out a workaround for. All of those are possible. And what I'd like to do, of course, is uh, down the line, continue to improve on it to make it a better overall user experience. And we'll get there. It'll just take time to get uh, from where it is right now, which is still really at the starting point to where I would like it to be. And in time, this will completely take over the Flash version. And I'm trying to get it up and running too uh, by end of this year. So we still have like a month and a half until potentially the Flash version gets completely shut down. And once that happens, then there's there's nothing I can do about the Flash version, it's done. But what I can do is try to have the Unity version, uh, the cross-platform version, uh, be playable uh, to a certain extent. We may not have World or any of those other um, usable or playable things, uh, of mechanics, I mean, uh, within the game at that time, but that's okay. They'll build out over time.
Anyway, uh, those are all good things to look forward to that are going to be coming down the line and things that I'm definitely looking forward to. But uh, let's shift our focus to, to where we are right now. So um, where exactly did I leave things off uh, yesterday or last night when I was working on it? I know I was in the process of getting the movement working. I showed you the camera system, which um, is is pretty good. It's not completed, but it's uh, I, I do like it. And then, um, so we got movement uh, working. We decoded the um, the directions and those packets. But what we need to do is do a transition from when the opponent character moves from one location to another so they don't just jump. Uh, that way, you get a nice smooth transition of them walking from one location to another. But before we do that, let's have a look at it and see where is it right now, and uh, we'll pick it up right from there. So what I'll do is I'll run it. I haven't even touched it since last night. I just booted it up, and uh, here we go. So I'll just give it a sec to build. The first build usually takes uh, a few seconds longer, but not too long. And then uh, once it's ready, I'll log in. And I'll bring up the uh, Flash client version. I'll bring up one of them. I have two clients connected in the game room. Just so I can jump in and there's uh, more than one client. Okay. There's our game room. That builds out. The camera is centered. I have my joystick connected, so I should be able to move around. Oh, I'm waiting for the one of the game rooms. Okay, I'll just do that and KO that player. Okay, so we'll just wait for next round. Okay, so that's me moving around. That looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty decent. I'm getting stuck on those invisible corners, which sucks, but that's okay. And then the camera is following me ever so slightly, and that's okay because we're within the boundaries of the camera. And the camera uses a soft boundary and a Let's see which camera or that one. So when I reach the boundaries of the camera, that's when it shifts over. Like when I move up here, it moves up. But when I move down farther, I have to cross this blue line. Once I cross that blue line, the camera starts moving with me. So the camera will always have a focus of the active uh, player, which is what I want. And then also, if I KO my player, the camera will follow me. And then it'll come right back to the center of the stage. And I like that. I think it's a nice little transition that adds a little bit more uh, uh, nice little aesthetic to it. Of course, later when I add some more camera functionality, um, the camera system will be significantly better in my opinion, but I think still it's pretty good. So let's have a look at the, the other player movements, though. So I'll select one of these other ones. And you can see the movement is very jumpy. That's because that's the individual packets. Uh, they don't have any smoothing. But you can see the character moving, though, which is the important one. You can see the character moving in all directions. And they're all accurate. And then when I stop, it stops. Right, So when you look at the Flash version compared to the Unity version, they're in the exact same location, facing the exact same direction. And that's what I want, is I want accurate um, synchronization. Uh, and then I'll add in the transitions in between, which will give it a much more nicer, uh, smooth walk animation. And that's what I want to do next is I want to transition between um, one location to another. And I believe this is it right here. 
So what we did um, last night was we listen in for the position packet that is a synchronization packet that the server sends. When the server sends that packet, it provides the user ID, position X, position Y, and then the direction, meaning the direction that the user is currently walking or facing, either or. We check against just to make sure, because this in this character model component, we check to make sure that the ID or the information is relevant to the this class, so this object that this class is attached to. If it's not, then we don't do anything and we don't need to, but one of these classes will be attached to one of the players and it'll pick up the information. So what we do is we get the information, we decode the direction because the direction is just one character. It could be A through P and the character breaks up and when it's decoded, um, it breaks up into an array of the four directions of which one's being active. Active being one, uh, not active being zero. The, the first one, I believe, was um, left. So index zero is left, index uh, one is right, index two would be up, and index down is, uh, sorry, index three is down. And that's one of the advantages of this. It just reduces the overall packet. Instead of having four different pieces of information, I just combine them into one single character. Um, and I think that works fairly well. I'll likely keep it uh, because I can add on to it later as well if I need to. But okay, so we decode it. And then uh, we convert the decoded, uh, the active directions, whether uh, left or right or up or down or active, um, we decode them and we put them into a vector two. And then the vector two, what we do is we pass it into the animator. And the animator has a horizontal and vertical move speed, which is the X and Y. And then it has a speed. So if a direction is active, then that means the player character uh, model is moving. So we set speed to one. If it's not active, meaning none of them are active, none of the four directions are active, then we know that the individual is not moving and they've come to a full stop. We just set speed to zero. We don't need to set horizontal or vertical because whatever values are there before will remain. That way, the character will continue to look in the direction that they were last looking at just by setting speed to zero. And then if any one of them, any one of the four directions becomes active, then at that point, what we're doing is we're just uh, setting the animator value and we're setting speed to one. And that's what results in the current animation, which is kind of jumping. And I'm gonna do that. The next part I'm gonna do is the smoothing in between. And the reason why it's jumping is because you don't want to send packets uh, over the internet. Um, it, uh, if it's local, uh, it can be okay uh, on a local system because you have near zero latency and uh, you're not worried about uh, network congestion or anything like that when it's on a local system. Uh, so you could send 60 frames per second packets or you could send packets at even 300 frames if you really wanted to, and you wouldn't have to worry about it at all, right? But when it's over the internet, you have to keep these things in mind. And no one sends packets at, because the game runs at 60 frames per second currently, you don't want to send 60 packets of position uh, within one second. That is not a good idea. It will bottleneck on the server it will potentially bottleneck on some user clients on lower end devices or on something that is uh, doesn't have the greatest internet connection. It'll bottleneck and it'll create an undesirable user um, experience. And then on top of that, the server, uh, like if it was only say 10 users connected, not a big deal. But if you ramp that up, it gets multiplied a lot and it increases to the power of, meaning multiplicative. Um, let's say for example, you have one user in the world, right? 
uh, sorry, two users, because they'll need to synchronize. If it's just one, there's no synchronization because it's only the one. You have two users. So one user, user A, uh, moves from a position, uh, we'll say, on the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. So those packets of movement are sent to the server. The server validates it, and the server doesn't send it back to the same user. It looks and sees what other users are within range of that that need to be synchronized. And if they are, then it will send it to the other users, not to the user that it originated from, but to the other users. If there's only one other user, then that means uh, if it's sending at, let's say, 10 packets uh, per second, which is still too high, but if you're sending 10 position packets, meaning here's my position, here's my position, here's my position, here's my position, 10 times a second, that's only 10 you need to send to one user. But what if it's two users, right? So, sorry, three users. So you need to synchronize two users, but it originates from one user. That means now instead of 10, you're sending 20, right? But what if it's five users? Now you're sending 50, right? What if it's 100 users, right? Then you're sending 1,000. That's only originating from one user. But now, if you have, let's say, two users that are moving, right, and you have, um, we'll say, 100 users to synchronize to, you're not just sending 1,000, now you're sending uh, 2,000. But if you have 100 users, all of them moving at the same time, each one of those 100 will need to synchronize to the other 100 or 99 users which results in a lot of communication packets, and that will bring the server down to its knees. And that's because of that, we have to optimize these packets and reduce them to the bare minimum required. So uh, some packets are considered key packets, meaning uh, key critical information, whereas others are just generic uh, periodical synchronization. Something that's a key position packet is, for example, let's say um, in within a game room, you're moving uh, across the screen and you go and you place a bomb in this location. So that means before you place the bomb, you need to send one key packet, the key packet being the exact position you are. So then the next packet, the bomb, um, when it gets positioned, it will match that key packet position that you just sent. I know it gets a little convoluted, but these are things that I had to learn the hard way because I couldn't find any information about this on the internet that was easily and readily accessible for someone like me to understand this stuff 10 years ago, right? Right now, there's a wealth of information. There's great resources. There's all kinds of YouTube videos. There's a fantastic amount of information out there. But back then, 10 years ago, it was more about figuring it out. And it's these trial and errors that I went through, which resulted in me coming up with the solution that I've come up with. So synchronizing is very important. And it's it needs to be optimized as much as possible, which is why you see this jumping. And the reason why you see the jumping is because I'm only sending a number of packets so when you see that character jumping, it's because those are the packets that are being sent at intervals per second, which results in that jumping, right? So if you take that and you ramp it up to, let's say we start sending 60 frames per second, 60 packets per second, yeah, it'll be smooth, but that's not an optimum usage of neither the bandwidth or the server resources or the client resources for that. For any one of those, it's not a good usage of it. So what we do is we have it sent at intervals, and then we have key packets that are sent in between. Now, that brings us to where we are now, which is that now we need to apply a smoothing in between those packets of movement to, to make it really seem smooth, like how it's shown um, in the Flash version of it. And that's what I'm going to do next. Um, how I'm going to achieve that exactly, I'm not completely sure. I think it's going to be some trial and error like it usually is, and uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out.
But let's see. So, but now that I'm at this point, though, I think I need to quickly reference and see the um, the old client, the Flash client version, just to reference it because I have a general idea of how I want to do it. But I want to have a look at it and see how I did it before. Maybe I can learn something from it or uh, learn at bare minimum what not to do. So let's have a look at that. I'll open that one up. It'll just take a second to open or more than a second, should I say. Okay, so it's just loading up right now. We'll wait for it. That felt like it was a bit longer than usual load time, but okay. So, oh, here we are right now. So position, convert X to columns, new stage position and then i'm using my custom tween at 500 milliseconds okay yeah i can do that Okay, so what I'm doing in the other one is I'm just transitioning from current position to the new position over a set period of time. Okay. Seems straightforward enough. I don't think I have, um, I don't know if I have a transitional or tweening class yet in this Unity version. I think I may have made one but I don't recall exactly. I'll have to look at it and see what I got. Because I'm rebuilding everything, right? So, and, and some of the stuff, it doesn't directly convert from ActionScript 3 to um, C Sharp. Y you have to convert it and modify it. And it looks like I do have a tween. I do have a tween. So I can either use my own tweening method or I can use Unity's built-in. Okay, so this is definitely a legacy one. I'm not using it in this project. Okay, and that's just the interface. Um, do I have any more? I wonder. Okay, so I have a transitional object. Not sure what that is. Transitional object. Two references. Where am I using it? Oh, okay. Start and yeah, I could probably just use this class. Okay, 
I think I might just use this uh, transitional object uh, component for now. So this does use lerp, which is okay, but it, it has this additional functionality on top of it. That's kind of why I'm leaning towards it is because I may want to add some more additional functionality later on. And I can easily modify this at a later time. Or I could just lerp. Maybe for simplicity, I'll just use the built-in lerp. And then later figure it out. Because I don't want to add additional functionality if I don't need it right now. Hmm. But I like this functionality. I'm, I'm kind of torn between the two. I'm not sure if I want to use this or not. I think I'll just use it because I don't want to. I don't want to rewrite some of this logic again just quite yet. And then later, if I need to, I can deviate away from it. And this doesn't look like it's bloated. It has some functionality that I definitely will not be using. But for the most part, it looks straightforward. So I think I'll just use it. So transitional object it is. OK, so that means we will need to go to our prefabs. So prefab, um, and I want the character model specifically. I will add uh, the component transitional object. OK, so now that we have that, what we can do is we can get the reference to it, character model. I'll just create a serialized field. So I want to be able to access it later if I want to change some properties and whatnot, because I want to expose uh, do I want to do it that way. We'll figure it out. I'll just say private, um, what was it called? Uh, transitional object. And then we'll say transitional object. And I like to put an underscore uh, at the start of private members. Okay, I'll just give Unity a sec to catch up. Okay, and then I'll just drag and drop this right into transitional object. That way I have a reference to it. The other way I could do it is do it in the start. But I find that sometimes, um, this works better, and I'm not sure why, because start gets called at a certain point, and I found that sometimes start isn't early enough. But if I do it this way, it's there. I'm not sure what goes on behind the scenes, but if I need it to be present before start, I find that serializing the field and dropping it in there um, works better for me.
Okay, so we have that. And then what we want to do is right here, what we want to do is call transitional object. And what we want to do is we want to set the movement. So how do we use it exactly? I, I, I don't even know. I'll move it over to the right side here. Okay, transitional object. I want it to transition from two over duration of time. So this is basically what I want it to do. To do that, it needs position A, B. Where is it called? Position focal point, position end. Yeah, see, I'm going to have to build a function into it. Because it doesn't quite do exactly what I want it to do. It does similar things. So the way that it'll work is it'll be start position, of course. Start position will be... Um, position start will equal... Uh, game object dot, uh, transform dot local position. And then the... End position. The end position will be the position that was provided. Okay, so then the position end will equal new vector three or vector two or three. What am I using? Vector two. It'll be new uh, vector two. X will be position X. Y will be position Y. And then the duration. I, I don't understand these. Because I used a multi-step transition for the way that I used it. This was used for the ready, set, go. Because what it does is it transitions from off screen to the focal point, And then transitions from the focal point across the screen to the to off stage or as it fades out. So there's three points to it. But I don't need to use three points here. I just want to use two points. So what we can say is uh, duration um, hold on focal. What? Yeah, I need to take a look at its usage. Okay, start focal point is zero, zero. Oh, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. And then there's an end point. How can I use it? Because this is going between three points. It's going from start to the focal point to the end point. I just wanted to go start point to the end point. Maybe this wasn't the right choice to use this class, I'm thinking. Let's 
because I don't think I want to mess with this class in that way. It'll make it uh, overly complex for for what I wanted to do. I think I need just a separate class specifically for the character model itself. I think that's what I actually need. Because it doesn't make sense. I feel like I'm trying to force something. And I don't like that. It, it leads to poor decision making. No, um, I'm forcing this. It's it's not the right solution. It needs its own class. Okay, that's what I'll do. That's unfortunate, but okay. It has to be done. It has to be done. So I won't need that. That means then the animator will also be moved into this new class. Okay, so that will get moved. Animator will get moved. What else? I'll need to move the packet as well, because synchronization packet will no longer be needed inside of here. Okay, so I'll need to move the position update packet. And then, yeah. All of those, they need to be moved into another class. Okay, so let's make that class. It makes a lot more sense to do that. So we'll go into, um, where is my classes character? Nope, where's my class character model? That's what I want. Okay, so we'll right click, create C-sharp class. Um, now, what do we call it? We'll call it model model position sync. I don't think that's the greatest name, but that's it seems the most relevant because that's exactly what I'm going to be using it for. It'll be used for um, for the model to do a position sync and animation. Sync and animation or transition. So it'll be called model position sync and animation. Animation because I'll be using the animator to, to do the walk portion of it. Yeah, I'm okay with that for now. Okay. So first thing, uh, like always, uh, I will namespace it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add that. So we'll go back to here, this transitional objects that I just added. We want to remove that. Um, remove component. What I want to do is I want to add this component. What? Error, 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 error. What did I do? Oh, yeah, of course. That will not be used in that way. Okay, I'll just give Unity a sec to catch up. Okay, so now we have that. Inside of this class, we'll for sure need the animator and stuff. So I'll move this over to the right. 
and I will remove everything out of this uh, character model class. So the animator, I'll need to move it over. So animator will get moved into the new class because it doesn't need to be there. That means I can comment it out. The communications, right. I need communication. So I will need to do a add event uh, listeners. So I'll need to add a private uh, void, uh, private void, add event uh, listeners, and then private void remove event listeners. And this I always do just because I've learned my lesson on destroy. I want to call remove event listeners. And then on start, what I want to do is call add event listeners. Okay, so the packets that I'll be listening to, wait, what is that? Okay. Bind and unbind. Right, that's okay. I'll fix it. I don't like uh, this here like that, so I will move it. If that equals null return, and this is just a validation check. So on destroy or on close, it doesn't crash. That's all I'm doing is just making sure. So I want to avoid getting error messages or having errors written to the log files. I'd rather much, or I would much rather just have it be clean. So I'm going to move this function here, the position update into the add. So that gets removed from there. It's no longer needed there. And then the remove gets added to the remove. So that gets moved as well. Room state, player frozen, player set, handle position update. I'm going to move this whole function out of here. Okay. And then actually, I want to be able to comment the whole thing out. Nope, not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay. I still need to do the same here. I just want to be able to comment it out and leave it in place so I know uh, later why or where. Ah, I keep doing that. Because I just want to be able to know at a later time where I moved something from and kind of where it was before. It's just for reference. And then later it'll get cleaned up. It'll get removed. But I can clearly see that that function is no longer being used. Okay. So I think we've moved everything out of here so far. So yeah, it'll, it'll temporarily be broken and that's okay. I'll fix it up. Okay, that looks good. Uh, in 32, I need to use system. Oh, using system because I want to be able to use um, system because I want to be able to convert string to integer using the in 32 method. Player user. Oh, I no longer have access to that. Okay, that's fine. We'll say private character model underscore character model 
and then on the start, what I'll do is I'll say, um, character model equals get component character model. If I could spell it right, character model. Okay, so now we have character model. Through character model, we can get access to player user. Right? Yeah, I'm just trying to clean it up to get it functioning the same way as it was before, but now the the code being in a, a different location. Okay, so that should bring us exactly right back to where we were before. But now the code is split off. Uh, it's no longer in exactly where it was before. It's been moved to uh, a different class file. So I'm splitting them off. That way, everything is grouped to roughly the uh, to a, a relative grouping of related information. And that just helps keep it uh, a bit more clean because it didn't make sense to add this stuff instead of the character model. The character model should not be doing uh, this type because I'm going to add some more functionality into here and it's going to be the um, a transition as well as the animation. So I'm going to be putting more logic into this. <clears throat> But first thing I want to do is, of course, test it just to make sure that it is behaving exactly the way that it was before. So that's important. Let's test that out. Just gonna grab the controller and move one of these models around. And it's not working. Okay. Let's see if there's any errors. Okay, packets are sent. I see no errors. Okay, so there's no errors. Um, so that means it's purely logical. Let's have a look at it and see. So on start, we add event listener. Handle position update. On remove, we're removing it. We're getting, I don't think this event is being fired. I, I think I really overlooked something. I think as I was copying and pasting, I overlooked something. So let's have a look and see, do we even get to this point? So I'll just say debug.log. Okay. I just wanted to output. That's all I wanted to do. I'll give Unity a sec to catch up. Okay. And then we'll run it. Go back into the room. Okay, and I'll just move around and see. So yeah, it, it's not even being called. Even though the packets are coming in, I believe. So all of these position packets are coming in. Okay, so what did I overlook? This is not being called. Let's trace it backwards. From here to here, add event listeners, add event listeners into the start. The start metals or sorry, model position sync and animation. 
that should be attached to the prefab. Where's my prefab? Okay. Here's my model position. Okay, I don't have animator. Oh. I didn't drag and drop the animator, so let's fix that. Okay, so now it has a reference to the animator. But I don't think that was it. Because that should have crashed. And we didn't get this output either. So that means it's just not being executed. So on start, it gets character model. Add event listener. Okay, so let's see, is start even being called? I'm just tracing it backward to see at, at what point, whoops, debug.log, to see at what point did I overlook something? So I'll make that one really obvious. Oh, I just noticed what I did wrong. That's so silly. Oh, I, I can't believe I did that. So in, inside of add event listeners, I put in remove event listener. Inside of remove event listener, I put in add event listener. Whoops. We'll just pretend that never happened. It'll just be between me and you, right? No one will ever know. Okay, so that should solve that. Quite confident that it should work. Okay, and now we have the reference of the model in there. That's why... Uh, it would have given errors anyway. So that's good that we caught that as well. Okay, just gives Unity a sec to catch up. All right, let's run it and see. Okay, yeah, so that's exactly how it was before. That's good, that's what I wanted. Okay, so that brings us right back to where we were. Now, I want to move on past that. So VCAM, don't need it, don't need that. I will, player user, I still use that sometimes, so I'll leave that. Move this over, I'm just rearranging some stuff, okay? Okay, so here's our class. What I want to add into it is this transitional stuff. So what I was using was I was using, of course, uh, time dot delta time, elapsed time, and I was using the update to to manually um, move the model around. I think fixed update would have made more sense. Whatever, uh, I'll, I'll worry about those performance optimization things at a later time, but I do want to do the same thing. So what I want to say is um, private, uh, private, and we'll call it a vector three, just because uh, positions within Unity uh, are, are uh, vector three objects. Um, we'll say transition, Trend position transition start. 
and then we'll say position transition end private float um this will be position transition duration and we'll set it to uh 0 0.5 So that's half a second, so 500 milliseconds initially. And then let's see, what else do I need? Transition in progress. Yes, I do like that idea. So we'll copy over transition in progress. What else do I want from there? Time elapsed. So time elapsed, okay? And then inside of the update, so we're gonna use the update now. Now I'll copy over some of this logic. Transition in progress equals false return. Yes, definitely. I do want that. So that means if the, Transition is done, you don't need to continue update. But if it is not done, time elapsed, time dot delta time, uh, or plus equals time dot delta time, that's correct. State, don't care. Current state, progress. Okay, I will need a progress. Yeah, I will need a progress. So we'll say private float. What happened there? Underscore, um, we'll say position transition progress equals zero F to start. So we'll need that variable. I'll change time elapsed to, I'll rename that variable. So control RR and I'll change it to, uh, uh position transition wait i didn't spell that right position transition time elapsed and yeah there's a lot of ways you can do this but i like to do these things manually myself it gives me a better understanding of it uh that way i can come back and and i just learned so much from from doing these things myself. I'm sure there's built-in functionality in Unity that would achieve exactly this, but this gives me more control and it gives me a better understanding of it. And it's how I learn by understanding these things and breaking them down into their core components. Okay, so we have that. And then what this is doing here is, I need to figure out progress. Okay, so progress, which is position transition progress, is time elapsed by the total duration. Total duration. So that way we're converting it into a percentage value of time elapsed which uses the time difference between the current frame and the previous frame, which is time dot tell to time. And then it gets divided by the uh, total duration. And that gives us a percentage progress. So progress then is, and we can go over it by accident. So progress greater than, greater than one, uh, progress equals one F. And then we check one last time. If progress uh, greater than equal to one, that means it's completed. So we can say transition in progress equals false. 
and then we can say uh, we can call a function transition complete, or we can say it more accurately position transition complete, and that'll be something that'll be for later usage. Okay, that way by setting this flag of a transition in progress to false, that means at the start of the update, if it equals false, it will not execute past that point. So this will only happen once. Okay, and then inside of here is where we can call pick. more accurately position transition pick. So private void position transition tick, I've created that function and that's where our, our logic will go. So I'll just put in a couple of notes here um, to check if Transition is completed. Increment uh, time elapsed. And we need to reset time elapsed at completion. We need to reset time elapsed to 0F. Or do we need to do that? We do need to do that, definitely. And then this one here will uh, convert um, time elapsed to percentage of overall uh, transition progress. And then we uh what we're doing here is uh check to make sure progress is uh capped at a hundred uh percent take the uh or call to call to increment the uh, progress of the animation. And then if completed, clear values. And that should pretty much be it. Of course, I still need to do the actual animation logic, but I think that kind of explains it a little bit. So then when I come back to it later, I know what I did. I think that's pretty good. I want this one to be a serialized field actually. because I want to be able to modify it. That looks pretty good so far. Okay, so now what we have is two functions that um, still need to be implemented. One being the actual tick, which will use lerp. And then the other being a uh, position transition complete, which is for later usage. We don't need to use it at this time. Okay, so let's see, how do we handle the tick over here? Tick will be Position start, 
Oh, right. That's why I did that, of course. Okay, so we will need this one, Lerp. And then from Tick, what we do is just call it. So, of course, these functions are incorrect, or sorry, the values are incorrect. So we need position start, position end, and then the progress which we calculated to be, where did I, wait, where did it go? Progress. Yeah, and that should be it. So that calls tick. So from here, all these calculations, everything leads up to this one tick call. And then when tick gets called, all it does is take start position, end position, and goes a position transition progress. I could even skip this function and take this and copy it and paste it right here to where this tick call is being made. But I think it's a bit cleaner because I want to keep that logic separate. I want to keep it intentionally in its own function. Because uh, I'll likely be modifying it at a later time. And then when that gets called, that just redirects it to lerp. And this function will just take uh, A, B, and time and a lerp between them. And it modifies already the correct transform.local position, which is the current game object transform.position. It keeps Z the same because we're not using Z, it's 2D. And that, that should actually work. But what we need to do is we need to set the values now. So on receiving of this uh, message from the server, so what we need to do is we need to set... Um, it might actually even be better to just call a function. Yeah, I think it makes more sense to have a function. I will actually make it a public function because I want to expose it. Do I want to? Because I'll likely want to use it later on. I think I want to expose it. Let's do that. Update. Yeah, I'll put it right here. Public void. And I'll say move um, I'll say yeah, no, move to move to position and it will take a vector three new position. And I want to pass in a duration as well. Okay, so then what I'll do is I will take this and I'll make a function call. Now, instead of setting, uh, how can I do that? I can just pass in the movement vector. Wait, oh, that's that's in the wrong spot. Okay, I'll just move this up right here 
And then what I'll do is I'll pass in movement. And then duration will be the transition duration. Because Z is not being used anyway. So zero value Z is perfectly fine. Uh, so even though it, it, it takes vector three, it takes a vector three. Um, I'm passing in a vector two, and that should be fine. It shouldn't uh, have any issues with that. So by calling that function there, this function, what this will do is this will set Position um, start equals uh, transform dot local position, and then it'll set position uh, transition end will equal the new position, and then the duration will be. No, I don't want to do duration. I want duration to be a separate uh, parameter. All I want to do is do that. I will take duration out. What I want to do is reset the values so it can be called at any time, and it'll interrupt this, and it'll reset it. So what it will do is it will reset the values first, and then afterwards, it'll set this flag to true, meaning the update will continue this. So time elapsed will also need to be reset because it's restarting. Progress, of course. Actually, progress, it gets overwritten. It doesn't matter. Progress gets overwritten. Ah, I'll reset it. It's just cleaner to have progress be reset back to zero. Okay, so on calling this, what it's doing is it's setting start and time elapsed to zero, progress to zero, and then it says transition and progress equals true. That means this logic will now continue in the update. And I think we're ready for testing. Yeah. I'll leave that stuff there. Start and progress. That looks good. Lerp X, Y, Z. That looks good. Okay. Yeah. I think we're ready to test it. I have a feeling I overlooked something, but we'll find out soon enough. Okay, no errors, which is a good thing. Let's see, any errors? No, I don't see any. Okay, so that's good. Now let's see how it works. <laughs> you see that character flying? Oh, that's great. How does that even happen? Like, what did I mess up there? So what it's doing is it's going from start to new. Oh, I'm not converting. I need to convert the values provided to new. That's why it's doing that. OK, that's my bad. I'm not converting. I'm just taking the coordinates as is. I need to convert. I forgot. I can't use x, y exactly as is.
Wait, no, I, I think there's more to it than that. I messed up something. No, there's something else going on. This this doesn't feel right. Let me disable that function and I'll go back to it. I I overlooked something. Okay. So by moving, it's jumping. It's moving because there's another call being made somewhere to the exact same thing. So this is being used somewhere else. I need to have a look at that. Position update. What other usages do we have? Handle position update. Oh, right here. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so that needs to be moved. What is that call? That seems very specific. Directions active is not used, of course. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I definitely overlooked that. And then it calls position changed. Position changed, then dispatches that event. And it goes back over to character model. Handle game position map change. That takes it. Oh, so it's doing this whole loop of logic. That's my mistake. Initially, when I put it together, I um, I just made it work. And this is not the best usage of that type of logic. Okay, so I need a different path for it to branch off in that direction. But that's good though, because I need this, um, this conversion of map position. Wait, is that right? That didn't seem right. So that calls that. This calls. Why does it not call player update? Player, oh, player data update. Okay, I misread that. Okay, this function should not be called in this manner at all. OK. 
Okay, I'll need to con modify that and correct it. So from here, instead of directly calling that function, Actually, I'm okay with leaving that there. It's my approach to it is, is just not clean. That's why it's even confusing me. So that gets called, goes to here, that goes to here, map position change, that's correct. This goes here, that's correct. This calls this, that's correct-ish. This is where it gets messed up. Okay, so from here, I don't want that in that manner. So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. Sorry, it's a bit convoluted. I'm just trying to make sense of it myself. That's okay. We're making progress. So what I want to do is I want to follow a different path of logic. So all of those values being set are correct. It's this part that wasn't correct. I don't want to set a position movement from here. I want to set the position movement from within here. More specifically, I want this to be set here, but what I want is the move to position. So what I need is the new end position. Yeah, that's what I'm doing wrong. So what I need is a uh, vector three new position. And the new position what I need to do is I need to convert convert x y from server to uh, unity uh, map location um, position in units. That's what I need to do. That's what this will be. And then we'll pass that in to that function when it's ready. So that's what I need to do next, is I need to convert x, y. How can I convert x, y? Hmm. How does this do it? It goes map position. So basically I need this function here, but I need it to return me a value instead of, so I'll say public void. Calculate, um, No, convert. Convert uh, position values. To units. And I'll pass in float X, float Y. 
and it will return a vector three. So this will be a vector three position equals new vector three. Position dot x equals position x is wait what oh okay I should name it more correctly position x and position y because what I want to do is I want to convert it these units that are coming in are coming in from the um, from the flash client flash uses different units of measurement than unity does so as a result of that, I need to be able to convert them from one to the other. Sorry, one sec. Okay. And then after when it's done, I want to return the position. But I still need to complete this because position X and position Y, they need to be set appropriately. Right now, this is not correct. I still need to take map offset into account. I need map offset. So this part is correct. It needs one other parameter to, to resolve. Where do I do the offset? There's got to be a reference here somewhere where I do it. Yeah, right here. Map position local plus map position offset. Okay, so I need to directly add it. Okay. I can do that. So then position plus equals um, map position offset correction. Yeah, that should be it. And then I return that. So that will convert the values for me in the way that I want. So I need to call that function. The way that I call that function is pretty much this. Directions active, no. What's that function name again? Convert, that's right. Okay, and then I'm gonna pass that value, um, new, new position, and that should resolve it. Yeah. Let's have a look and see, shall we? And there we go. It seems a bit off. It seems a little bit off.
what is causing it? I'm not sure. We'll find out. But looking at the Flash version of it, I'll just wait for next round. I'm just comparing to see if that flash version. So the flash version, as soon as you move, it starts moving. There's a slight delay, of course, but that's that's to be expected. Okay, but then when I flip that, I'll just clear this path just so I can see it a bit better. Oh, I see. So lerp isn't the right, lerp is not the right function for me to call. Lerp is doing a smoothing transition. That's my mistake. That's what's happening. Okay, I see. So lerp is just not the right call. Instead of lerp, what I should be calling is, let's see, what other options do we have? So I'll just hit F12. So we have lerp, we have hmm. I'm not sure which one would be the right call. Let's uh, do a quick Google search and see. So we'll say vector uh, to lerp. Vector, yeah, I did mean that. Vector to lerp. Lerp, lerp unclamped. Okay, let's just go with vector two. Okay, so that's linear. What is max distance? Because this one kind of seems a bit more like it.
Okay. So I'm not sure what the function call would be. I thought lerp would achieve what I wanted it to, but lerp is doing this um, angular smoothing that I don't want, which gives me a uh, kind of an undesirable result. But um, that's okay, though. Uh, I'll, I'll fix that up. If not, I'll make my own. I'm okay with that. Uh, what I like is the progress. Um, because progress wise, it looks pretty good. So now we have the movement working uh, quite well. So we have animations uh, in all directions. And yeah, it needs a little bit of clear up, clean up, but I think it looks pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I will need to clean that one up. I was kind of hoping I would make a bit more progress towards some of the other tasks that I have on my to-do list, but um, that's going to likely have to wait for a bit later because um, I have other things that I need to do. And I don't want to get into deep logic right now because then I'll just get stuck with uh, working on it and uh, postpone the other things that I need to do. I have a meeting that I need to get to later today as well. So the remaining things on my to-do list, of course, is I need to fix the camera, uh, but that's that's minor. It works pretty good. Okay, so the walk animation, uh, I'm gonna say that's 90% complete just because the 10% being that uh, fix that I need to do. And I'll move that higher up on my priority list. Okay, so that's the number one on my priority list. And then the other things that I'd like to do is I actually want to change the primary navigation. So right now, the primary navigation is somewhat intrusive. And uh, these buttons, they don't do anything yet, but they will in the future. What I want is for this primary navigation to collapse. Uh, what I mean is this menu button is meant to expand and collapse the primary navigation. And this needs to be likely uh, hidden somewhere into the top left area. So the idea with it is that you press the button, you press the menu button, it expands and it brings itself to the center and it unveils uh, all of the navigation. And then when you don't need it, or if you don't interact with it for an extended period of time, what it will do is it will uh, collapse into the corner and it frees up this space in the upper region of the screen. Because right now, it's a bit intrusive. Uh, the debug button, that, of course, is, is separate. That's an entirely different thing. Uh, that'll remain there. But these buttons, I want them to um, not be in an intrusive location because it's taking away from the viewable area of the screen. And I want to do, I want to implement that. So that's another thing that I want to do. It's on my list. But the big thing that I really need to get to is the composite collider. The composite collider is going to be, uh, it, it's a pretty high priority on my list. And I really want to address that. But I think that's going to be it for uh, for today. Uh, I will, of course, um, do some work on the project offline. But I have other things that I need to attend to. So today is going to be a little bit shorter than usual. Um, but I still think that's uh, it's pretty good. So yeah. Okay, no, I think I think I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it for now.
Um, if you're interested in the project, um, and if you're interested in any of these broadcasts, you're welcome to watch them. I do upload them to uh, YouTube afterwards. I know I'm a little bit behind on some of these, uh, but I will try to catch up by end of uh, tomorrow. So by Sunday night, uh, the three videos, including this one for this week, should be uploaded uh, onto YouTube, so you can watch them at your discretion. If you want to be a part of the community, it is a small community, but it's a small community that has been around with this project for some time now. Uh, you're welcome to join us on Discord. I do occasionally uh, update my dev journal as well on the official Project CSK uh, website and forum. And yeah, if you like these videos, uh, follow me. Uh, let me know what you think. If you're welcome to interact with me, ask questions and whatnot. But Project CSK is something that I'm going to continue to work on for some time uh, moving forward. And there's going to be some really interesting things coming towards this project that are uh, that I'm really looking forward to. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it or maybe learned something. But uh, yeah, have a great Saturday and uh, maybe I'll see you next time.